Jonek trying to keep him alive, and Anomalous picks it. He has a sound mirror. The answering grab go. Oh, OT gonna be ticking down, and they've actually done it. Dynasty say thank you very much. We're going to the semi. Super. He has to be careful. He's caught out. Oh. He's, in, he's down. That's the first pick, and now the rest will follow. Puffy is a huge ass shatter, and the Vancouver Titans stand on the precipice. They say the North never forgets the Vancouver Titans. Your stage one champion. Hello, fellow gamers and noobs. Welcome to Esports in 30, the show where we take a deep dive into all of your favorite esports. A different one every day of the week. It's Tuesday today, which means you're stuck with me, AJ Fry, and my co host, who we're all sorry to be stuck with. It's Ron Renanthra Lee. <laughs> You can't, like, you get my name right, but you have to insult me in my intro, so I don't know how to feel. Like, am I supposed to be happy, or? You're supposed to be happy. I, I glossed over your current uh, title as coach of UC Irvine's uh, okay. Overwatch team. I you had a tournament title. over the weekend. How'd you do? Not... I'm just making everything worse for you right now. Who's our guest today, AJ? <laughs> Before we uh, deep dive into uh, the first stage, where we're going with the second stage, we will have a former grasshopper of Ron's tutelage calling in to offer pers a player's perspective on everything. Before we get to that, though, here's a little video quickly recapping some of the big storylines from stage one. Do you need a hug? Sentence is out from Aim God, but it's going to expire. They will be able to finish him up. There you go. They're going to get him. Just a couple more percent to go. Let him have it, Boston. Axiom, pop of the Bramble Rage, but it does not matter. Ladies and gentlemen, history has been made. The Shanghai Dragons with a 43rd attempt out managed to pick up their first match victory. Love to see the ground. Box him out. That's, That's going to be a hack on Jonik, as you say, in the back. He can't use a trend sentence. He gets it's the middle of him. He comes it's in late. late. That goes trying to stay in the suit. We'll be able to do so, but for a little bit longer. Now they pop him out. They take him down. The card advances. Soul Dynasty. They make it look easy. They can still make this work, but it's going to be in overtime. As they work their way forward. Oh, what, what, the 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 oh, oh, what was that? He eats it on the side. It doesn't do jack. That goes throws a bomb to the back of this play. Trying to buy a second. Finally, EMP comes in. The shatter's absolutely huge. Jonek trying to keep him alive, and Anomalous picks it. He has a sound mirror. Now the answering grab go. Woo! OT gonna be ticking down, and they've actually done it. Nene chokes at the final hour, throws the grab off to the side, and Dynasty say thank you very much. We're going to the semis. What are they doing right now? Oh, that is interesting. That is a really. Can you get over the roof there? Oh my. Oh, oh my! Head. What a play! What a grab! Tosses in the ground, they're gonna make it work. And Cruz taken out by the ensuing self-destruct. Oh. Atlanta Rain breaking through that in the most stylish way I've ever seen. Cruz is a feeder! It's a lot like playing cello in a, in a marching band. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Answering grab coming through from Vancouver. Locks him in the sound barrier. Sound. That's a huge the bomb coming in from John. Oh my god, oh. Mikel! He does it again! Oh, this is gonna hurt. There oh. it is. Okay. They Not as bad it. as it could have yeah. been. And uh, Bob is gonna be a little bit out of position, but still the Titans are able to turn this around. A shock. A too greedy for that, but super. He has to be careful. He's caught out of position. He's down. That's the first pick. And now the rest would follow. Bumpy hits a huge ass shatter. And the Vancouver Titans stand on the precipice. They say the North never forgets. But now the North will never be forgotten. The Vancouver Titans, your stage one champions. So much managed to happen in those few short weeks of the first stage. And before we look ahead to stage two, we have a little bit of cleanup to do on all of that. So to help us do just that, welcome to the show. Support for Mayhem Academy, Nolan Paintbrush Edwards. Welcome to the show. How you doing? I'm doing great, guys. How are you doing? Good. Doing pretty good. Yeah, you guys want to have a little hello? You know yeah, one another. Long time yeah. no see. Nice beard. Yeah, how's it going? Yeah, yeah. Got some wins. 
Yeah, yeah. We're, we're doing good now, you know. How does that it's feel? It's a little better than last season. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to come at me like that the whole show, isn't he? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, we'll talk uh, about uh, your team in just a bit, but let's talk about uh, the first stage of OWL here. Um, did any team in the league surprise you, uh, Paintbrush? Did anything uh, blow you away, or did anyone blow you away? Uh, definitely the Vancouver Titans. I was expecting them to do good throughout the stage. Uh, definitely wasn't expecting that hard roll that they did all the way through uh, through to playoffs. Was a really good game with Shock though. Like mm. the, they really put up a fight, and that was a really impressive match to watch. Mm. Were there any other teams on your on your list who kind of caught you off guard with what they brought to the league? Well. Uh, some teams being as low as they were yeah. definitely caught me by surprise. Uh, there were certain teams running comps, uh, like the Chengdu Hunters. That was definitely a little surprise to me. Yeah, and they, they were certainly fun to watch, uh, breaking the meta, throwing us uh, all kinds of random compositions. In the, yeah. Well, not random, strategized, I suppose. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they were planned. Yeah. yeah. They, you know, them rolling around, sure. that was all strategy. That was. They drafted the rotations and everything, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, we'll be <laughs> eager to see uh, how they do in the, in the second stage. Uh, okay, so let's talk about uh, about Mayhem, if if we can, for a moment here. Okay. Obviously, uh, being on the, uh, the contender team, the academy team, what is the relationship with the main team then? Do you get to hang out with those guys, watch them practice? How does it all work? Uh, so... Our, like in our facility we have two rooms right next to each other uh, so we do get to interact with them a lot we actually got to scrim them a decent amount too last stage oh. uh, so that was a really good learning experience for us uh, they did have us try to run some ball comps at times to practice for Chengdu oh. and uh, <laughs> that was an experience we had to learn the comp for them uh, but overall our schedules don't necessarily line up to the point where we can really hang out uh, right. they're usually at the facility a little later than we are so they're doing their thing, we're doing ours, but we're both grinding, so that's good. Cool. Do you guys uh, like take the same notes and apply the same lessons to your teams, or are you separate enough that you're like trying to do your own thing and improve in your own ways? So each team is definitely improving in their own ways. Like We each have things that we need to personally work on. Yeah. Uh, but the coaches do definitely interact, so there's times where they'll throw us a bone, we'll throw them a bone. But overall, like we're working on our individual things. Mm. So it's not it's not super tight, but there is some some kind of things yeah. that transfer back and forth. Of course, yeah. I'm kind of at a loss as to what to ask here, Ron. I mean, so I mean, I, me and Nolan have a lot of history, so I'm I'm packed full of questions here. Yeah. Um, some that might be a little bit difficult. So okay. here's here's a fun one, I think. Okay. I know Nolan's from New York. Yeah, I am. He is, but he's playing for the Florida Mayhem. Yeah. Ooh. Right. So. If let's say let's say you weren't on the Florida Mayhem, right? You you you're not. Uh, like a part of the organization, who is your favorite team in the league besides them? Do you have a horse in this race outside of Florida? Well, it's uh, it's not Nixel, tell you that much. <laughs> but they're so uh, good. I I know, but I I'm a really big fan of Fuel and Valiant. Those are my next two teams. Um, I I want to say Nixel just because I'm from New York, but I, I just can't do it. What is it about the Fuel and the Valiant that make you fans of them? Uh, just some of the players on the roster, staff. Uh, I actually, I'm a big fan of the color green. <laughs> that's not a lie. That's not a lie. Uh, that was actually the first favorite color when I was a little kid. I was like, yeah, I love green. You know, the green Power Ranger. He was my thing. So, oh, he's yeah, my favorite too. For sure. How are you feeling? Uh, you know, being associated with the uh, the McDonald team then. Oh, it's great. I love McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they order McDonald's all the time. Yeah. They oh, really it's do. great. Yeah, it's that delicious. That and Chick Fil A. I'm I'm happy to be a part uh, or a fan, I should say, of a team with the awesome color scheme of uh, oh, black of and red up yeah. here in Toronto. Um, do you have any uh, players in OWL that you look to for inspiration? Any uh, support flex that uh, that you're a fan of? Hmm. So I've actually I watched a lot of slime POV. His Lucio is very, very strong. Uh, Masa, I watch his POV a lot, and Moth. Those three Lucios are probably ones where I've learned the most from. Uh, as far as like individual like leadership role, it definitely has to be a player like Custa. Wow. Mm. How would you compare yourself in that standing amongst your favorites? Do you think you're Overwatch League ready? Do you think you have more to learn from them? Uh, I think I'm close, like really close. Uh, but there's definitely a lot more to learn. I definitely have a ways to go as far as like my expectations for myself and for where a support player of any caliber should be. 
Well, can I ask a, a deeper question about that then? You know, I play all the time. I do not play anywhere near the level that you guys play at. Platinum. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a low platinum at best, but uh, I grind it, guys. We'll get you there. I, I play tons. But so what are those differences that separate the people who, who make it into OWL versus the people who are in contenders or are currently playing on the, uh, the circuit in, in college and university? Like, what are those little mechanical differences? Or is it's it mechanical at all. Yeah. yeah. So what is it? What puts you over the top? So in my opinion, it's actually not mechanics. So a majority of professional or semi-professional players generally have like very strong mechanics to begin with, aside from the occasional like main support player that gets through with uh, just comms or just being an IGL. Uh, for me to make the leap from, say, contenders to OWL, it's really nailing down consistency in your comms, your game knowledge, uh, just your ability to kind of like be a leader inside of the game. Mm. So that's that's been the hard thing I've been working on is just making sure that I really understand my leadership role within the team and really like harping on that for myself. Mm. So given that topic of leadership, when you're watching as you know a part of the audience these Overwatch League games, how do you discern, or is it even possible to discern who's a really good leader or who's really good at shot calling just from looking from the outside? Um, that's that's honestly really hard. Uh, it's hard to tell who's being the IGL. Uh, you can look for the emotional leader. That'll generally be the person you can see it in their face. Uh, they're very invested. They are very like talkative to their teams. Uh, you can tell through their body language whether they're like laying around getting people like riled up. But overall, it's it's still really hard just to see by who's talking on stage or what they're doing. All right. Well, let's uh, think beyond just uh, support players. All players in the league. Who is your standout MVP of the first stage? Of the first stage. Well, I'm going to take it back to my friendly support pairs, players, and I'm going to have to pick my boy Masa. Yeah. I've actually never talked to him before, so I guess he's not necessarily my boy, but I love his Lucio performance, and I think he's going to be a very strong contender going through the rest of the season. Mm. Ron, a counter, counter thought on stage one MVP? Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll roll with his answer. You know, i got to support my, my former grasshopper. Uh, uh, I think Masa's a great choice. He doesn't stand out a ton because his team overall isn't super high in the standings. Right. But, um, you know, I've seen Masa play various times, you know, in, in scrims and stuff like that, and his mechanics excel. Um, his shot calling is great. He has a really funny voice. Mm. Uh, you know, like, it's hard not to pay attention to him because his voice is so distinct. Uh, Nolan, give us an impersonation. Go. I, I can't do it. It's like, I can't it's, do it. It's very, <laughs> it's very funny. I, someone should pull up a clip or something on air later. It's hilarious. All right. Well, we got to talk about another player with a very distinct voice as we move on to the second stage. The retirement of a legend. A man who made his dreams into memes and showed off his stuff in a very impressive Overwatch League career. The troll legend himself, Defran. Before we talk about that news and so much more, let's check out a short tribute to the aim god himself. You think I can post on the fire? Watch this. Woo! What is this? What are they doing right now? What is that is it saying? That is a really. Can you get over the roof there? Oh my. Oh, oh you can! What a play! Touchdown. What a grab! Tosses in the grab. They're gonna make it work. And Cruz taken out by the ensuing self destruct. Oh, 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 oh. Atlanta Rain breaking through that in the most stylish way I've ever seen. Do you have anything you want to say to your fans? With the help of Twitch Prime, I immediately managed to pop off. Speed, 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 speed boost. Go, dude! <laughs> so it seems as though he has redeemed himself now, leaving on a very professional note without any grand uh, exclamations or anything uh, eye-catching. What are your thoughts here, Paintbrush? Are they going to replace him with someone from the Contenders team? Are they going to sign a new agent? What do you think Atlanta's going to do with this? Uh, I think they're definitely going to weigh their options. I don't know for sure. I could see them definitely pulling up someone from their contenders team, although I could also see them picking up someone new, mm. maybe someone with a little more experience or leadership role within the team. Yeah. Uh, but regardless, I'm very sad to see DeFranco. Aren't you familiar with uh, another 
Hitscan player may or may not be on your team that's also from Denmark. I'm oh, just, yes. Yeah. That is crazy. I think his, his name, name is Shax. Yeah. I, I, yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah. He's, he's pretty good. He's very insane at the video game. So, hey, Atlanta, you know. Maybe. Yeah. But do you do that? Do you, do you pick up people just because they're from the same no, region? I, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying it's because he's from the region. I'm just saying he'd be a good cultural fit given the circumstances. True. <laughs> and and he's genuinely insane at the video game. Yeah, he's he back in LA. Hard carry this meta. Yeah, yeah. Shax is really really good. Yes. Um, yeah. How do you think uh, Atlanta will actually look moving forward with the loss of Defran? Is he like the linchpin of the team? I mean, they still got Dogman. They still got lots of talent on the roster. Are they going to be able to recover from this loss? Uh, I think they'll be able to. I don't. I don't think it's a necessarily like team breaking switch for their roster. I do see it like hurting them, maybe team morale. But I think they'll bounce back very strong from it. Mm. Well, that moves us into teams looking to bounce back from oh, yeah. um, less than stellar performances in uh, the first stage. We're talking L.A. Valiant and Washington Justice. So when you're on a, a team and you've got this losing streak, do you kind of put those? Um, benchmarks of the playoffs at the end of the season and even the stage two playoffs out of your mind and just focus on like winning every game and making those minor improvements what are your general approaches to uh, being in that position which is obviously not the case for you this season yeah. doing so well yep. just win everything uh, well, that's the answer yeah, yeah just if you, don't lose if you just win you don't lose so that's a really good way to go about it well uh so we all know that overwatch league is definitely a marathon rather than a short sprint Right. So in my opinion, if things are going poorly or you're starting to lose games, maybe you think you shouldn't be losing, uh, do not panic. Do not ramp up how hard you're working. You should have a nice consistent schedule and keep it steady the whole way through. Just keep grinding it out. Just you'll get to the results eventually. The worst thing you can do is start lunging out for it. it people will just start falling apart. People will burn out. Mm. It's not really the best way to do it. Well, you know, talking about the Valley and the Washington uh, Justice once again, do you think there are things they could actually look to improve to see more immediate results going into stage two? Well, I'm not necessarily sure what their internal issues are. Um, if it would be maybe clashing cultures, personalities, uh, maybe you look towards some roster changes. Mm -hmm. uh, Which you Justice could have also... done. They picked up Arc. True. Yeah. Very true, which is a good pickup for them, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you could do something more to uh, merge the two cultures together or get people talking, maybe some team bonding. Uh, if it's some individual in-game play, like inside of the game stuff, uh, just focus. Uh, it's a marathon. Like, Just mm -hmm. trust the grind, trust the process. Well, with Overwatch being a relatively new sport in the grand scheme of things, uh, nothing like the MLB or no, no. NFL with long-standing grudges between teams, London Spitfire may have uh, the beginnings of a little chip on their shoulder after that stunning loss to Seoul. Uh, you know, first season champions now struggling. What do they have to do in order to pull themselves out of the position that they found themselves in after the end of this first stage? Uh, just trust themselves. They're all good players. Uh, they have a good thing going for them. As long as they stay in it and play their game, I think they'll be looking strong. Mm. I mean, again, like London Spitfire have never lost a soul before. They're they're so confident. No. They're saying as long. I think was it Bird Ring? Uh, someone on that team said on social media, as long as I'm part of this team, then Soul won't ever win against us. And lo and behold, we saw kind Ooh. of that backfire a little yeah. bit. Have you yeah. ever been in that scenario where you're like, okay, you know? Uh, underrated a team or so, something and like took an unexpected loss. How'd you recover? Yeah, uh, and it, it definitely hits your ego pretty hard. Uh, it, it stings quite a bit. It's pretty hard hit. Uh, you just have to go next. Uh, it's a really weird feeling. I don't know how to explain it, but you're packed up with all these emotions and you don't have any choice but to use it to grind and go to the next game. There's really nothing else you can do. Funnel it into motivation is basically what you're saying. Pretty much. That's a way better way of saying it. Well, uh, Chinese fans must be uh, motivated right now, as their teams must be as well. We're all oh, yeah. sitting in the middle of the pack, Shanghai, Chengdu, Hangzhou, and Guangzhou. Hopefully I'm saying all that right Hongzhou, there. Hangzhou, Hangzhou, Guangzhou. Guangzhou. There we go. Um, they got to be doing well. Anything uh, catching your eye from these teams' paintbrush? Anyone uh, thinking, or are you thinking anything to stand out in this second stage? Well, uh, I'm not necessarily sure how to answer that one. I just, I'm really looking forward to where the meta will fall. And yeah. I think if it goes back goats, maybe we'll see some of the same results from these teams. If the meta shifts, I could see some of these rosters really, really making a climb through the rankings. 
but overall, I, I'm not really sure where the meta's falling yet. If well, you had to take a, a guess, where would you hedge your bets? On the meta? Yes, on the meta game. Okay, so I have a crazy, crazy theory, oh. and I, I don't know how crazy it is, but I think Arissa Baptiste comps are going to be insane. Bunker comps, eh? So, yeah, hmm. I think I think it's going to be crazy. You throw that more to fill like the uh, my team calls it immortability. So, I'm going to call it more immortability. You throw, you throw you throw the immortability down, <laughs> and you can perma peak a sniper. There's a widow. It doesn't matter. She can't kill you. So I I don't know. That's that's all I'm saying. That so will be interesting. Yeah, yeah. we've had some conversations around the office of yes. like maybe seeing uh, Bastion actually <laughs> getting some play with uh, with Baptiste's you know invulnerability shield yeah. in there, but uh, th I think that's probably a stronger uh, contender for this. You know, if we do get that uh, meta shifting um, gameplay in this second stage, who do you think will be the teams that will most benefit from that new uh, approach to to the game? I think Shock will be very strong. Oh, yeah. Shock again. I, uh, there, there might be teams that benefit from it more uh, because Shock is already doing relatively well. Their Ghost is actually very, very strong. Uh, but I can see see that team having a main tank like uh, like Super. You can really, really make use of the Ursa. I feel like he's a really smart player, and there's a lot of cool things you can do on that hero to really cheese the enemy team with the pole. I don't know. It's like it's a terrifying thing if the Ursa is good. Mm. Are you concerned about the meta falling into, if, if you're right and snipers are really strong, seeing a more sniper-centric uh, kind of swingy meta game like we had uh, in stage one? Or not mm. stage one, but last season? Season one. I would like that. I have a crazy, crazy Mercy, and if that means I get to play Mercy, I'm all for it. Mm. Oh, okay. Confident. Do you think that yeah. we'll see yeah. a, a different meta for contenders in relation to OWL, or is it always the case that contenders really just tries to mirror what's going on in, in uh, the main league? Uh, I think you'll see contender seems mirroring. So I'm pretty sure we're going to be going on to the Baptiste patch for playoffs. I I think that was public knowledge. I It's fine. Oh, well. Uh, so I think we'll just copy what Owl's doing. I think they, they'll have some time grinding different comps and finding out what's good. So it makes more sense for us to kind of build off of the steps they've put there for us rather than trying to like make our own. But in all honesty, we'll probably still see a lot of teams playing GOATs just because of the, the lack of time to practice the new comps. Sure. Yeah, it's familiar, it's comfortable, everyone yeah. knows how to yeah. do it. Well, uh, the Mayhem Academy team, as we mentioned, have been uh, doing incredibly well. How has the team grown over the past uh, few seasons, and why do you think you're in such a great position now? Uh, I'm honestly getting goosebumps thinking about this. Uh, <laughs> the team is definitely a family. There is no other way of putting it. Yeah. Everyone on this team has each other's backs, and we are all here for the same reason. We all want Owl. We all want to win. So it definitely helps that the uh, Florida Mayhem as a whole has given us the environment to focus on improving. Whether we win or we lose, our goal is to develop as players. We have the resources to do that, and we really do have the players to, like, really go along with that mentality. So I really just think it's down to the team atmosphere, the culture, and how hard we've been working. Hmm. I mean, talking about contenders and more about the culture, and your team specifically, what players do you think from your team will be the ones to rise up to OWL first, if you had to take a guess? Or maybe not from your team. What other players do you think are OWL caliber and we'll see joining either mid-season or by next season? Well, so if we're looking at just my roster, I can definitely see Shaxx going very, very soon. Uh, Shax is a very, very strong player. His mechanics are actually insane, and he's really been working on his communication. So there are some players that might knock him for being a silent fragger, but he's really been working on that. So I can see how a team picking, up, picking him up soon. I could see a team picking me up maybe if they need a main support mid-season there are some teams that might be lacking in that role plug. um a little bit of a plug but it's true i could see actually fact fiction uh he is an amazing leader in game some players know him as maybe getting a little uh emotionally invested at times but he's that's something that he's really been able to grab a, like get a nice uh, good control over mm. and he's been working like very very hard so he's actually the one calling in game for us after every fight i'll track alts i'll make sure we have a, a nice game plan like on the way in fact pumps out the call i'll add on to it but it's primarily him like doing our rotations and guiding us around well it sounds like you guys have an awesome system and i'm yeah. again i couldn't be happy to hear you guys are finding success
I appreciate that. Thank you. I was going to say, I'd be very excited for you to succeed and, and get that place in OWL, but it sounds like you're having so much fun where you are, so oh, we get to great. continue yeah. to enjoy that. Yeah, you stay in Kitsanis stay forever. Yeah, yeah stay. Exactly. It's fine. It's great. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Well, on that note, that is all the time that we have for you today, Paintbrush. It's been awesome right. having you on the show. Best of luck, and uh, we'll see you in the future. Thank you very much for having me, guys. Appreciate it. All right, Ron, we got just a few minutes left, but we got lots to talk about. Where do we even start? Should we start with April Fool's Day and Reinhardt? Yeah, let's go with April Fool's. You know, it was <laughs> yesterday, and that was uh, a ride of a time for me. Yeah. Yeah, I went to Ranked, and then I had a couple of Reinhardt players message some uh, odd things, followed by, you know, his voice lines in all caps. So it was right. weird to see Reinhardt say maybe some things out of character followed yeah. by his classic, uh, classic catchphrases. I was just impressed that they were able to embed an April Fool's Day gag actually into the game. You yeah. don't often see that. You'll see like games marketing material or little fake trailers for things, but an actual April Fool's Day joke popping up in game is very cool. Yeah, it caught me and like my entire six stack of uh, players off guard. We were all cackling and laughing. We forgot what heroes we had to play. And it was like, <laughs> oh my god, okay, that was funny. But now there's like 15 seconds. We Focus have to pick on this. We got to cap the point. Uh, okay, obviously, uh, Baptiste is out in rank today. Yes. We thought it was last week, but it's actually here now. Yeah. What are your big concerns here, Ron? Uh, I'm worried that I won't get my role today. I'm worried, you know, coming in as a support player, everyone right. will be taking uh, my hero away. I'm really worried that people won't have practiced him yeah. uh, beforehand or going going in fresh and just learning him on the fly because it was that's it was a great that idea. With Anna and Moira as well when they were yes. released. It's like, no, guys, I'm the support main. Right. Don't play these characters if you don't know how to heal people. Yeah. Like DPS players will pick him, being like, oh my god, look how much damage he does, yeah. right? And they, they, he doesn't do that much damage. There, it's, he can do it's, some, and especially with the amplification sure. shield. Is it his role? It's not his role. Is he designed to do damage? Heal and support. Then don't pick him. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, ABC picked up uh, the playoffs and broadcast them. On our last show, we were talking about people's negative reaction, but now right. we should talk about the fact that lots of people were watching, including 367 thousand people that's a big number watched on saturday yeah yeah how does that compare to like traditional tv out of curiosity do well you, you it, have experience yeah it's, it depends on you know it wasn't prime time it was the middle of the day on a weekend so yeah. usually people are out and doing things uh yeah. so you might expect that like maybe one to two million would be sort of your average viewer so it it was a little bit less but for an esport Premiering in the middle of the day, that's still maintaining a lot of people's attention, and that's yeah. certainly not counting uh, Twitch either. Yeah, Total that's not viewership. counting what your your viewership on Twitch is as well. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, pretty impressive for uh, for Overwatch League, and Definitely. hopefully those uh, ratings continue, especially uh, in the states, and just brings in more viewers and more celebration. To, yeah, I mean that's the uh, hope. That's that how we love. get a that's how we get our careers yes. uh, to take off <laughs> when you're on TV. <laughs> Yeah, and there, there was March Madness going on at the same time, yeah. so lots of people were probably checking that out if they were sports fans. <laughs> and sports fans in Vancouver will be very excited to hear that the Titans will have a new home for the third season of Overwatch League, and that is the Rogers Arena out massive there. Massive place. Yeah, it 18, feels like 18,000 seats. It's, that's, it's massive. Mm -hmm. It's no small, like, Philly Fusion is building their own arena. Uh, you know, yeah. whatever. That's, I think it's that's only cool, like but... 3,000 seats for the Philly Fusion, something yeah. along those lines. And I even feel like, it's interesting because when you go to watch competitive live sports, it's obviously a big arena works because there's big action. But really, an Overwatch match could be played in a basement. Like, it could. Yeah, because it's just six it people sitting around me. computers. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> me too. It's just a LAN party, guys. So yeah. you don't necessarily need that huge arena of 18,000 people, but if but you've got the fan base and the Titans are doing as well as they are, and it's, you know, the same venue as uh, as the Vancouver Canucks, same ownership, so why not make use of that space if yeah. you can? I mean, I don't think they'll have any problems filling out every single seat on, like, the minute tickets are opening. I yeah. mean, I remember when I went uh, downtown to the Rogers Arena here, and then we had, um, you know, for, it was for League of Legends, there was right. like, it was like the land final, oh, yeah. uh, and like the second it went to the website to buy a ticket, crashed. Wow. Instantly. I had to refresh the page for like maybe five, six minutes until yeah. it finally magically worked. I snagged a bunch of them for my friends. It, it was hard to breathe going into that place. It was, it yeah. was so packed. It's so weird because if you're in the know with esports, you know just how huge and popular this stuff is. But if you're not in the know, your perception of it is like... Completely oh, yeah, that foreign. thing that, like, you know, there's a few people who like yeah. that thing. It, 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 there's a different. There's a dozen of guys that there, might watch this. There's a moment soon, and it's going to happen within the next couple of years, I'm sure, where it's just going to tip, and everyone's going to be aware of how, you know, uh, huge this is all become. What year? I don't know, maybe 2020. 2020? I'll say, I'll say this is the year. 2019? Yeah. 
We'll see. By Christmas? I don't know. How do you identify that moment? Though? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. When, I'm when, my grand, when my grandmother knows, yeah. that's how you know. OK. Yeah. Well, my grandmother doesn't even speak English, so that's that'll call be. your grandmother more yeah. often. Oh, I'm sorry. But we got to wrap it up. Uh, that's all for OWL Talk here today. Thank you to Paintbrush for calling in. And of course, thank you at home for opening your ears and listening to us nerd out about video games. Don't forget, Drew and Brody will be here tomorrow to chat all things fighting games and NorCal regionals. And finally, check out our socials at Squad State for all kinds of goodies. See you in the future.